Hey everyone, my name is Bevo Devo, and today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of using the autopilot systems in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Now for those of you who don't know, autopilot is a great feature that's pretty much on every plane in the base game of Microsoft Flight Sim that allows you to navigate easily uh, and pretty much take a hands-off approach in dealing with um, your aircraft. So if you want to fly somewhere and you want to do it direct or whatever, through your navigation, you can just set a course, hold steady at an altitude, and continue on easy sailing. These systems will allow you to change your course, change your altitude, and allow you to navigate with ease in Flight Sim 2020 without having to do too much user input beyond just turning dials and pressing buttons. Now, a big reason I made this video is because after about two days of Flight Sim, I was still having a lot of trouble with autopilot. I would find that when I turned it on, it would often lead to a drastic course change or my plane would pitch up or pitch down violently uh, and seem like it wasn't working at all. And after a bit of research and some troubleshooting with it, I finally figured out how to use it and I'd like to share that information with you because in my research I was unable to find anything on it since the game is so new. Alright, so for today's demo we're in the Cessna Citation. Now I've flown this uh, for probably about six to eight hours total. Um, so I'm pretty familiar with it and with enough um, messing around I finally you know figured out what everything does so uh, beginning with button placement the big three you're gonna want to know are autopilot which is gonna be placed over here altitude hold uh, heading select and vertical speed now these are gonna be the three basic buttons uh, that you're going to want to work with and are pretty much going to make your flights a lot easier. Now there are more advanced features in this uh, airframe and in a lot of them, but I won't be going over those today. I'm just going to keep it simple and brief to help you maintain steady level flight and stay on course to where you're going. So that way you don't have too many troubles in the air. So what I like to do before I take off just to get everything prepped is uh, turn my heading select on. And as you can see on the nav screens here, we have this blue little I like to call it a crown, but basically this blue little thing that's going to go around the uh, dial. So if we turn our knob any which direction, you'll see uh, it's going to rotate and move along the compass. So as we can see, our uh, course is going to be, you know, about west. So if we just go ahead and rotate this over um, to the other magenta line, which is going to be where we're heading, uh, we can go ahead and pre-select our heading. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and turn our altitude hold mode on. Uh, that way we can go ahead and select our altitude. Uh, you can either scroll wheel or click with this. Uh, it just will change the speed. Scrolling is a lot quicker. Um, but typically, you know, for higher altitudes and stuff like that, it's going to be easier. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set our climb to about 6,000 uh, just to be our initial, and we'll change it as we go. So then in regards to the vertical speed, if we were to click that just to show you, it's going to put this little dot or this little uh, arrow here, um, and that's going to show your rate of climb. So if we decreased it, it would decrease the rate of climb. So we would start, uh, we would nose down and start descending. And if we increase it, uh, we would nose up and start ascending. And the way that the vertical speed works is it works off of the altitude hold. So since our altitude hold is set at 6,000, we just go ahead and set the rate of climb and then it's going to climb until it gets to 6,000 and then level off. And we can keep repeating this process for climbing even higher. So if we want to go from 6,000 and then air traffic control tells us to go ahead and climb up to uh, 20,000, then we can go ahead and change that and then turn on VS um, again, adjust it, and it will climb for you, which is really convenient and really cool. So we're going to go ahead and turn off VS for now, uh, bring it back down to 6,000, and we can go ahead and take off. So let's Remove the parking brake, get set up, ready, awesome. Full throttle, and let's go. So once again, our heading select is on already, our altitude hold is on already. Uh, all we'll need to do is throw on autopilot once we take off, and then adjust the vertical speed, and we can start our climb without having to do anything. So here we go, we're taking off, wheels up. And if we go ahead and slap our autopilot on, but vertical speed on, as we can see the arrow is already here. Our plane is going to start turning, banking to the left. Uh, we can go ahead and increase our vertical speed. 
Archer, I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Perfect ATC is yelling at me as it should. Now we're going ahead and getting into some uh, overspeed here. We can just go ahead and adjust that by dropping some throttle and increasing our vertical speed. Now as we can see down here, our heading is off based on our bearing, and we're getting infinite warnings now. But that's okay. Uh, we can go ahead and adjust our heading and get right back on course. And basically, you know, for simple navigation and stuff like that, you want to just go ahead and, you know, follow your magenta line. And as we can see, we are climbing fairly aggressively. Uh, so we should be at 6,000 feet in just a bit here. And in this whole process, other than adjusting dials and stuff with my mouse, I've kept my hands off. The takeoff I did uh, manually, but once I was in the air and kind of stable, I went ahead and slapped on autopilot with everything already preset and then slapped on my vertical speed. Uh, the closer we get to our uh, desired altitude, you'll see that it'll start leveling up. And then it's going to slowly rise up to where we're going to want to go. So, as you can see, we're slowly getting to 6,000 feet, which is exactly where we wanted it set. I'm only doing using the mouse to look around. I haven't adjusted anything with my controller. And we're getting right to where we want to be. And then we can see our heading is a little off. Uh, we can adjust that once again. And let's go ahead and say we want to climb to... Well, since we're overspeeding, we might as well climb. Let's say we now want to... We get a thing from air traffic control and they say climb to 12,000 feet. And we go, okay, we can do that. We know how to do that. Drop that to 12,000. Hit vertical speed. Go ahead and increase it. And we can be pretty aggressive about it. And that guy will stop yelling at us about overspeed for just a quick second here as we ascend, because we're going to scrub speed in this process. And this whole ascent is being done completely hands-free. So let's say, for example, I mean, you can be pretty aggressive with this. Well, we want to go back to the airport. Uh, well, we can just go ahead and slap our heading select and send it in the exact opposite direction. You can do this in a faster way. Um, if you scroll wheel, same idea, scroll wheel is going to be faster but just less precise and get generally where you want and we're going ahead and turning. Now let's say at this point two we need to go ahead and descend to 2300 feet. Well then we do the same process we've been doing before and just scroll wheel, scroll wheel, scroll wheel until we hit, nope, oh, too far. This is the problem when you scroll wheel, is you get a little too intense with it. And we'll go ahead and that, okay, so that's all. Turn it back on, go ahead and decrease vertical speed. So we can maintain a descent. And as we can see, we're making a wide left turn and the nose is starting to arc down and we're gonna start descending fairly aggressively. And again, no hands on and controls of this, and my plane's yelling at me now because we're descending and we didn't really scrub that much speed. So there you have it. Those are the basics for the uh, autopilot controls within Flight Sim. Now each plane's going to have a different configuration, so you'll need to make sure you look for those proper buttons in order to use them right. And there's more features than I listed and showed off today. So if there's any more you'd like to see and me explain, please let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see me do some more flying, well, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And for the week that this video is releasing, uh, which will be August 20th, uh, that whole week I am working on a transcontinental flight, which I'll be doing all on stream. Uh, so if you want to see any of the legs of that, feel free to pop in at 8 p.m. EST will always be the starting time uh, where I'll be flying with the boys and heading across the U.S. Thanks so much for watching.